What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Masters of Sport. Here with two-time world champion, co-author of the year. <laughs> That's like my favorite intro. Yeah, I like that one too. It makes <laughs> me feel good. Like this is, I, I want to tell you, this is Caitlin's favorite shirt. Actually. The shirt is yeah. cool. She loves this shirt. She's like, dude, that shirt's mm. really neat. It'd be funny. It'd be if cooler if it was like a pink shirt with all the, like the w- album. Why like, doesn't color. someone with more st- editing skills than me mason make a meme of cream like that but do like some wu-tang thing with it oh that'd be good like the yeah. the cash rules are yeah. like that would there's some way to do it yeah i'm sure i just don't have the brain power right now dane what have you been reading lately talk to me about all these science articles since you've been talking all this which one you got reading right now I, I sort of feel bad because it's one of the ones I talked about last time, which was the. Oh, that's all right. You're still reading that same. There, one? I got another one. Oh, I got one. The I don't remember if I brought this up on air because I have so many conversations about this. The P five O. Oh. Fiber fermented foods study. I wrote that when you told me about that one. I brought it up to my wife because she was like, she's into lentils and beans and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, Yo, Dane was talking about this one. Check it out. Yeah. FIFO is the big one right now. And that's a big, and that was published in Cell, which is a huge, like, microbiology. Uh, like, the, like I would say the, like, paramount research journal. Um, this is the fiber article, right? Yeah, fermented foods and fiber and what happens with your microbiome when, when you consume this and what happens. Can you alter uh, your microbiome so your gut, like, like little bugs in your belly that help digest food and is there a difference between a lean person's gut flora versus and and if i say microbiome or gut flora they're sort of interchangeable um if is that lean person do they have different gut flora than uh obese person maybe i need different gut flora to get my six well, pack back so they they even talk about like um how you basically uh, you it it's possible to change it pretty pretty drastically and they they actually the, when I was reading it I thought about uh, fermentation and when you um, more so mostly when you make beer like how quickly the grains become spent like when they're done and it's essentially within like three or four generations and that's like how quickly your your gut flora can adapt inside of your belly and so it, it happens quickly especially if you're eating foods that are higher with resistant starch foods that are complex carbohydrates essentially is where it stems from which is prominent in fiber but also prominent in uh like boiled potatoes and um foods like that and then they sort of study what happens when you into your gut flora when you consume specific fats and and how does this impact uh and protein and then um what happens with with your with your inflammatory markers so they establish what markers we should be worried about um, you really learn this article well yeah well i feel so, like i don't even need to read it now <laughs> so one of the one of the things that i'm doing when i'm studying this stuff is that i'm trying to read it as well as i can i try to take really good notes on it and then i have to give jason and trevor like a five minute presentation because i'm i tend to be a little long-winded no no <laughs> So we set a timer. We did it three times so far, not with FIFIFO yet, but we've done it three times. Uh, and then we sort of talk about the key points. Okay. So it makes me a little more succinct. Good. Yeah. I'm proud of the two of them. So I think I'm going full steam, fiber, fermented, lean protein. Basically, you get your residual fats from chia seeds and from animal fats. Very nice. Um, and then and I'm going to go full steam ahead and try and convince all the – idiots who believe that liver king's actually clean and is following the carnivore diet and that's why it looks like he does i'm gonna try and save all of you morons who <laughs> bought full steam into this guy i'm gonna try and save you so you don't you know like so you're healthy later on in life i know i know you got conned by all of his ridiculous marketing <laughs> just like you get conned by everybody else so look for me for for saving your life you're so nice <laughs> I'm going to call you an idiot right before I help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but seriously. You're stupid if you think the liver king's not on drugs. You're dumb. Yeah. Literally. Man, I feel bad. I, 
I just finished that Thinking Fast and Slow book. and Daniel was, Kahneman, you just threw it all out the window. Uh, uh, That's like my life. Dude, I don't that, know about that. I just I read it. Someone gave it to me. I was very appreciative. They just like, I was like, oh, I'll read this. That so, so that book and there was another one like Into the Fire, I think, was another one. I haven't read that one. But they're like, that that book's good and it's good for someone like me oh yeah you're a gut person like yeah. your system one your heuristics or whatever like you're all about that yeah I, and like i did like that book and i try i did a good that's job that's why your frowning makes you so thoughtful yeah exactly <laughs> that see that's why you're not as good as th- like right now i get you laughing so i always get you not as thinking as the Hard. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah, I, I mean, dude, I think it's if you slow down your thoughts, yeah. it was maybe not your thoughts, but you slow down your re- your your external reaction is the most important thing. Yeah, to slow sometimes down. it just sounds like you got to take some time with that system too. The problem was, I felt a lot of the stuff he had in that book was like math, and I'm, I don't want to brag, but like my brain's decent with like in my head math. Yeah, like I'm not like reach for a calculator right away. I'm yeah, like, yeah. yo, I'm gonna do this type of thing. So a lot of the the problems, because you, you're reading one, which is slower than just conversation. I was able to like work some of the stuff out. I'm like, oh, okay. And I have a I have a favorite um, math problem that's up on the board right square now. Square root of negative one. That's my favorite number. Square root of negative one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Wait, what is that? Four. Two forty divided by ten. Two twenty four, or no two forty divided by twenty. Twenty twelve. Yeah, that that's what it was. Uh-huh. Trevor and I were talking about it earlier. Oh, good job. It's like one of those math problems. It's extremely simple, but then you're also like second guessing yourself because it's big numbers. <laughs> Just because there's a zero there. Yeah. Man. It's easy to get people. I feel like you're like Billy Madison. You passed the first grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All yeah. Right. Let's talk about the quad muscle. Okay. Quad. Quads. Yeah, let's talk about it. In my opinion, this is only me. The teardrop is one of the most baddest looking muscles there is. Like yeah. someone yeah, who has a cool. teardrop, you're just like, whoa. Yeah, they're 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 like, jacked. Yeah. How'd that happen? Like yeah. that's awesome. It just looks gnarly. Like it it's so s- swole. And swell. It's funny that you say it because people who have a teardrop quad are very, very likely going to be like ideal genetics for a bodybuilder. Not to get too far yeah. into bodybuilding, but it's like that big teardrop is almost always going to show up in someone who is extremely hypertrophic and just all around looks good. Yeah. It's- like looks like real good one of those muscles it's just like wow lucky you and also too like we're always told like posterior chain right yeah and yeah it's super important yeah like, but come on acknowledge the anterior sequence <laughs> yeah and the quads roll in it right yeah yeah all right yeah. so how do we get big strong quads dane how do we do it what exercises do we use front squat front squat yeah front squat front squat to a box pause front squats uh, short lunges, short backwards lunges, like short step, short step. Um, pistol squats are extremely good. Uh, high rep, really, really, really high rep, like death reps, like Can, 30 reps. I remember like I press. asked you one time, I was like, I, like programming. You're like, what do you want? I'm like, well, I want my quads to get bigger. You started giving me leg extensions for sets of like 30. Yes. Into pistol squats. Yes. And like. I would. I, I don't want to say I would cry, but like, my Close. quads would just be pumped. Yeah, I. I think. Okay, so I, I want to come back to what you just said as an anecdotal, similar to the bicep discussion that we had in the previous podcast. But, um, looking at, I would also argue one of the best ways to get a stupid pump in the quad. It, you know, high rep pistols, high rep leg extensions, and pulling a sled backwards. You pull a sled backwards, and it's, like, almost entirely quads. How would you mechanically deload that? Like, which order would you recommend? Would you start with, like, the leg extension, which is super easy, but will well, get no, if you, I would, like, firing completely? I, if I wanted mechanical, I would go pistol, sled, leg extension. Right, but th- 
Pistol has more joints. Yeah, but I feel like the pistol, though, putting it at the beginning, like, doesn't make it. Okay, you could do this. Instead of a pistol, you do heels elevated Spanish squats for oh, a set dude. of 30. And then you go into this prowler, and then you go into, after the prowler, or after the sled, then you go into leg extension. You're dirty, and you just do the leg extension until fail. Until you right? die. And then you rest, like, five minutes and do that again. Only need two sets? Yeah, probably. So that's how I get my quads all swollen. They need a lot of volume. What about uh, your hack squat, dude? Don't you love that too? I hate hack squats because they're so horrible. You're a baby. They're a really good exercise, but I hate them. They broke Jake. They broke Jake so well that he PR'd in his squat. Quads. Quads are the fastest muscle um, to go like catabolic, to lose muscle mass. And this is directly from Judy Anderson, who is one of the greatest uh, physiology uh, satellite cell researchers in the world, and she she has said you put somebody in a uh, you, you you put somebody in a, in a leg brace, uh -huh. and let's say they go in there for four weeks, their quads will shrink within like four three or four days, whereas like the rest of their muscles it doesn't happen. It, it's a much Why later. Why does this happen? I, I don't know if it's like a, like a joint protection or what. I, I don't know. She didn't really specify with that, but yeah. it happens. So they that's why they respond very well to a lot of volume. So, you know, this is where I also believe this, and this is totally anecdotal, so you can mock me and tell Whatever. Me. We're on a podcast. Like yeah. We're, we're okay. not like submitting things for journal. <laughs> <laughs> the, the leg press, okay, so when I was – when I first started to train outside of like, I would go up and train at the high school. I would train with my dad sometimes at his school, Daniel Boom. But then I would also get on the leg press. I'd ride my bike up to this place called Body Works. And I've told story about stories about Body Works in the past. I bought the tricep machine, if you've watched any of our previous episodes from Body Works. Anyway, I would get on the leg press machine. I'd squat a little bit for like four sets and I would just like half-ass my squats like I'd still do. Baby. But I would get on the leg press machine and I would do like five sets of 15 or like five sets of 20. Because you can load it up with so much weight, too. Yeah, we just caught a mouse. I just heard the mouse trap go off. Oh, I there. heard that, too. I thought it was a weight drop. And I think I hear it flopping. Anyway. Um, oh, it's so sad. <laughs> sorry, mouse. Um, but you were eating some things. I could see your, your droppings around my... <laughs> Chewing on wires yeah, on wire. yet, too. <laughs> anyway, that was the first leg group that taught me how to push harder than biceps so it's okay. like that's the best thing about machines is that you start to learn like oh okay now i feel even more discomfort and i think that you know that that's an important lesson for all of us like who are strength coaches is that that that's tough but then you have to transfer that into Quads are extremely important for drive phase and acceleration and jumping ability. So You're getting and, ahead of me, but okay. Okay, sorry. Keep going. No, no, I'll stop. Don't stop. We were just talking about movements to do, and then you were getting into the next thing. I was we're, thinking of that song, uh, Annie Up. Oh, I love that song. From uh, M.O.P. and... There are so many people on that. Busta, Busta Rhymes, Rhymes is on that, too. So I just kept wanting to Annie Up in my mind. Yeah. You know what, Dane? I'm sorry for cutting you off there. <laughs> Let's go into the quads role in sports. Okay. Because so, we get it big, and I was going to get into, like, how do we do get the sarcoplasmic pump, which we were getting into with, like... You you do big-time drop sets yeah. on a leg press. And, and when I say a drop set on a leg press, I mean you hit a set of 10, you take off 100 pounds or 200 pounds. Then you hit another set of 10 or 15. Then you take off another 200 pounds, and then you hit, like I said, 20 or 25. That's how you get that pump. And you can do the same stuff on a sled and on, on leg extensions, and that's how you get that, that monster hypertrophy. Now, if we have mobile quads, we should have pretty stable um, like knee movement, which should be – pretty stable as long as you're st still doing your posterior work but yeah. we're focusing on the anterior sequence so if i if i have good mobility in my hips now i can lengthen my quads even more especially you know around the vmo and that's where we're going to see that teardrop but now you you either want to do short range of motion for the teardrop or really really deep range of motion which is why you'll see 
you know, weightlifters have huge VMOs yeah, and that's squat so deep. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's, it's really important for knee stability, but that leads to then if I'm trying to cut, um, or if I, if I'm trying to accelerate off the line, all of my transient speed is going to be the start and all the, and the deceleration and the cutting is all going to be based around quads. Okay. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's where it's so important for knee stability. Quads make you fast, everyone. At least when you start, like yeah. they're the big movers to get the, for the going. F- yeah, the first twenty yards, for twenty meters. Yes, absolutely. Nitrous in the quads. That's yeah. what we need, right? Quads and glutes is is key there. Awesome. So, quads play a huge role in sports. Yes, but they're not so naysayed like the biceps and triceps we talked about the other episode. So I think they are a little bit because. There's there's like this there's a little research around the breaking the 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 breaking forces of the quad when you're running at max speed. So there's still some people that will say like, well, the breaking force at top top speed can lead to um, more energy to overcome that breaking force, which then leads to slowing down faster than somebody else. If you're running the hundred meter or the or the two hundred. If I was running the 100 or the 200, so that seems specific though to track sports and that phase of the speed of okay. that. Now, if I have an athlete who's a very and you, and you can see this, you could actually see this um if you nobody really follows indoor track, but I do a little bit. <laughs> this is a really good example and I would love if Jason could put this into the clip here. Look at the chick from Poland. Jason just deep stuff. Okay, so her her name's uh, Svoboda. Okay, she's a sixty meter like sixty meter girl all day. Her quads are enormous. Her her quads are just she's jacked. Like you she looks see like her a cyclist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she looks like a sprint cyclist. And and actually, um, even there's a there's a woman from uh, Ireland built very similar to her. But Svoboda just beat and set an indoor meeting record. Uh, she just beat Elaine Thompson Hera, who is the best sprinter, essentially best female sprinter, I believe, of all time. 100, 200 meter Olympic champ two times. And so has the hardware to prove it. Yes, she is the best. Now, the difference is Elaine Thompson has extremely long legs and is extremely explosive in in her hamstrings so she holds better form later on in the race svoboda is like a subpar 100 meter girl like she's she'll make it to the quarters maybe i'd have to look if she yeah only like top 24 in the world just i I don't even know if she made i don't know if she made the semis in tokyo i would oh wow she's an olympic athlete yeah you know mediocre at best where i'm going with this (laughs) is that a lot of people will take that research and say well you know based off of this uh quads slow you down and i'll apply it to yeah other sports right gotcha my argument would be elaine thompson you know she's the best ever could benefit from a little more quad training to improve her start not really but theoretically yes because her her um her advantages are are after 60 60 70 80 90 she's she smashes she has that like 40% 40% of the race still left. Yeah. And, and you can actually, if you watch the indoor race that, that just happened um, in Europe, you can actually see Svoboda. St- she's starting to get hawked down. Yes. Yeah, so you can sort of see here, like. Um, oh, wow. She's way out in front. No, this isn't. This isn't the race. That, that's uh, that's not the race. Whatever. She's still that, crushed. That, it's, it's later in this clip, I think. That crew. Because it was tight. It was tight between Hera and... Uh, that wasn't even... This, she, is, this is her national record. This, was this just like two days ago? Yes. Whoa. She uh, s- it's, smoked that group, though. Keep go, wait, go a little deeper because I think there's... Is Hera in this race? Because it was tighter than that. No. She, whatever. This one, she destroyed. Yeah, whoever. You, but you see her, her, her build. Look Those at her quads. Those of you on just the audio, she has like a left sleeve almost but not quite jason go to huge go to the world athletics instagram she's already in the lead yeah look at that start and then she opens it she's at least like and the chick the chick who's over to her left cam bungie to her left 
um, dude, she's she she won the Diamond League in the two hundred in Eugene. She's literally one. She's a top six women sprinter in the world, and she just got lit up because the sixty is a different game. The sixty is much similar. It what you see there that's going to transfer over to to so the world of sports. Like if you're playing an open skill sport, you're probably better off if Looking you're like going to run in track and field, look like her or run the 60 type of thing. Yeah, and, and and that goes into if I'm training someone, you know, again, somebody who's longer legged, I want to work their quads further out from their peak. Yeah, this is the one right here. This is the one that that's oh, where that you close. Yeah, so that's the one where you can see too I mean, just look at how yoked she is. And then if they show Thompson, Hera, um, her build is just so drastically different. She's to the left there, to the left of her. There. Wow. You could see she started to – she's uh, yeah, she, Hera started to catch her, but it's 60 meters. It's short. It's over already. Yeah, so to transfer over – if I was training sprinters, I would base it off of all right, how good how what's their build? What's their leg length? And someone like Svoboda, as you know, probably most of her training, I would try to focus on her posterior chain. But as we get into a peaking point, we've got to go to where she's strong. I gotcha. So I, I think that the quads, yeah, you can see she's starting to get hawked there, but it doesn't matter because she just she just broke, you know, uh, she just broke the meat record. Won. won money. Um. Yeah, she's good. So, so we'll see. Uh, it's bad that I. What's bad? Uh, it's bad that sometimes I think some of these dude. She might be on drugs. I don't know. Oh. It's because she's not American. No, Hera is not American. She's Jamaican. No. no, I thought you were talking about Swoboda. Sorry. Uh, let's talk about. She's Polish. Yeah, that's not. I mean, it'd American. be like it'd be like one. It's, even the Americans on drugs aren't on drugs. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't one of them just get popped? Yes. Yeah. Um, let's talk about quads and co-contractions. Okay. The With knee the drunk. Drink. Yeah. And just and, or and wherever. The hip, like and the hip. And the hip. Yeah. The anterior sequence, if you will, right? Yeah. Because that's how, what it boils down to. I, I think... Um, well, are you going to be talking about are – you, are you saying – You're going to be talking. I'm asking questions. Please. I would say it's going to be hamstrings and quads. All right, and so knee. they're working together with yeah, the knee. Yeah, And – Nordic curls, everybody. Yeah, Nordic Nordic hamstring curls. In a, I, All dads out there listening, you're six-year-old. Start them doing Nordic curls. Keep them going. Now and never stop. Yeah. If you want an athlete – That's what you got to do. Make it happen. Yep, absolutely. Especially a shorter-legged kid. Especially yeah. a shorter leg kid, you've got to hammer that home. And and with women, it's even more so because it'll drastically decrease any ACL issues because that's where we're seeing. I mean, there's so much research on um, glute, hamstring, quad, all related to the stability of your knee. And that gotcha. the stability of your knee, if it's not stable and you don't have the skill to co-contract, that's when then when we see catastrophic injuries yeah, like here that. Here comes trauma. Yeah, exactly. It's lurking. Yeah. Here comes so the baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so being able to coordinate everything together at a high speed, like cutting, um, you know, when you run, plant, and cut somewhere, it, it, that can even be learned when you're learning how to clean, you know, or yeah. snatch. So, man. That's extremely important. And that's like where we're going next actually next month, that's where we're going with some of our uh some of our research. Sweet. Co activation. We're gonna get smarter. Yeah. Brain's gonna expand. Co activation slash co contraction. Upgrade that gray matter because someday it may matter. It, yeah, actually we <laughs> were talking about this uh myelin sheathing today and I was thinking about gray matter when we, we we become more rigid as we age because we're losing that myelin sheathing. Uh oh. That's from I got that from the talent code. Oh, I haven't read that one. That's pretty good. It's it's like an easy read. Yeah. I should read more books. <laughs> more difficult. Stop reading these Supreme Court cases. The opinions Shut like up. Those things are brutal. They're silly. Dude, they're so well, it's just silly how I don't want to get into it. Yeah, would, do we have any questions here? We do have questions. Oh, you just got it. 
Did you, you don't even have the like script in front of you, like the outline, <laughs> and you literally answered my next question, the role in aging and strength. Were you like eyeballing it from there? No. How am I going to eyeball it here? I don't know how. You, and then you just have it. You're psych- it was the blue heron, the psychic abilities. <laughs> that was one it. good thing you did, too. Yeah. Dude, I love blue herons. Yeah. I love them. Well, we saw it going yeah, down. Yeah, when we were driving yeah. there. Dude, I always think they're like the modern-day pterodactyls. <laughs> dude they're I, huge I, I went to jurassic park in my dude brain. they are huge you were like people are like eagles are huge dude yeah. eagles are huge don't get me wrong they're enormous but the blue blue herons are way bigger like, they're like don't mess with me yeah they're huge man it was probably lucky with them we got to see one just driving like uh, we see them a lot around here oh, actually we're lucky sorry. we're fortunate <laughs> i don't see them as often as you <laughs> all right audience questions train your quads kids yeah definitely everybody and try if you want. Try some of those crazy bodybuilding things. Yeah, make it happen. Yeah. Comment. Yeah. Tell yeah. us how awful it was. <laughs> that could be a reels I make show, tomorrow. Show us your tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That would be a good one. That's a good that's I'm training tears today and it's yeah. my quad. <laughs> and then have so like the Mike, the Michael Jordan crying <laughs> yeah. meme there with it all the time. That'd be awesome. <laughs> all right. You two, Michael Dillard. When should I do jump squats or Depth lift squats at the end of a workout or the beginning? Beginning. Beginning of a workout. Beginning. Yeah. When you start, buddy. All right. L.A. Space Boy. Oh, nice name. Yeah. I'm thinking of L.A. Space Boy woman. L.A. <laughs> woman. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did I ever tell you when I, I was thinking about Spaceman 3. records away? Did he kill you? He was really mad at me. It's funny because my I think I've said this before. My dad never liked the doors, but. Uh, he had a bunch of them. I gave a few away because they weren't like being yeah. played and he's like i can't believe you did that i was like my bad you don't you yeah. ah, <laughs> next christmas i know what i'm getting yeah. dad uh, <laughs> brand yeah. new Do- doors album that he still won't play yeah. but he'll feel well, better he only plays his rolling stones album <laughs> oh, it's classic uh, anyway <laughs> la space boy three um ever since matt frazier crossfit athlete Made a claim about taking beta alanine before his training competition gives him a third lung. What's your thoughts, and has it helped you with your cardio and lactic acid? Yeah, I love beta alanine. That's why I designed a pre-workout stampede that has five grams of beta alanine in it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's it's. There's some people that will talk negatively about it, but I think one, the placebo effect of feeling the tingles helps a lot of people. It hurts a lot of people, but it also helps a lot of people that have the the feeling of association. Now they start to associate that feeling with competition or with training and with focus. So that placebo effect is good. But then also, uh, actually, Trevor's one professor at Messiah has a ton of research on um, – unloading it and that's the one thing i would recommend four to five days a week loading beta alanine so that you saturate your muscles long term and and they have they've done a lot of research on on rowing capacity and seeing that drastically uh improve over time as the saturation point increases uh, i always tell wrestlers to take that you know five grams you know about an hour before or a half hour before like a big if you're in a tournament in the finals match like that's a really good it's really good. It's it's great, and a lot of bodybuilders are successful with it as well. Beta alanine, everyone. Yeah, some people. I know Derek from More Plates, More Dates talks negatively about it, but I I don't think it's warranted. Well, Matt Frazier says it's a third lung, and, and that guy legit has endurance. A third lung. Yeah. Like, and he also, I mean, that's that was his weak point, and and and. That was his big weak point coming up, and then they basically sat there and they're like, "All right, every day you got to be on a bike, you got to be on the rower, or you got to be running every single day." And that was like one of the main points of where he became so dominant, because his strength was already there, and he was doing that and still squatting like five forty. Yeah, well, when he would compete in the, I don't. Sometimes I don't know if he could have squatted more or if he was like, "That's what it I was." His, to yeah, squat. yeah. Like, that, I would think it's probably that. Wise with him sometimes, like. Yeah. Because why overdo it? Like, if yeah, you went by a to. pound, you still get first place. You don't yep. need to, like, crush everyone with it. So take your beta alanine, uh, smash your quads, tear and drops. always train your teardrops. Yeah. Until next time. Cry about it. <laughs> Peace.